Welcome back tonight in the hot box, former representative Maury Lanning out of Minnesota. Mr. Lanning, thanks so much for joining me tonight in the hot Thank box. You. I want to start with a diversion. You just recently had the 30th annual Red River Basin Commission Land and Water event. Tell the audience, uh, what did you learn in that event that maybe people don't know but should know out in the public? Well, we've been at this business of trying to do water management on a basin-wide perspective for 34 years. And this was our 30th annual summit conference involving Canadians, Minnesotans, North Dakotans, and people from South Dakota. And uh, we talked about a whole range of issues, uh, drainage, water retention, talked about drought, talked about uh, the diversion was one of the topics on the agenda for the, the session. And uh, we've been coming together, as I said, for, for 30 years, and it's an opportunity for neighbors to discuss the issues and see if we can find some common ground on problems we're facing. Help me understand this, because I look at the Red River Valley, probably some of the best, if not the best, <clears> farmland <throat> in the planet. How come we can't develop a more basin-wide, holistic approach to this diversion challenge, I mean, excuse me, to this flooding challenge, rather than just going with the FM diversion? Well, we've been working on this on a basin-wide perspective, as I said, for a long time. In fact, uh, back in 2009, uh, North Dakota Senator Tom Fisher and I uh, went to our respective legislatures and asked them to provide a million dollars in funding for us to come up with a comprehensive long-range plan for flooding solutions here in the Red River Basin. And uh, I have a copy of that uh, plan here uh, today. Uh, this uh, has been formally submitted to both Minnesota and North Dakota. And in that plan, there's recognition that our metro area needs a diversion. Uh, we need a 500-year uh, protect, protection from flooding. Uh, hopefully 500 years will never come in our lifetime, but uh, we didn't think we'd have the kind of levels we've had in 2009 and other years. But, again, I'd like to see a more holistic approach. It sounds like obviously you're on board with a diversion. I want to get your thoughts on an Oxbow. Oxbow recently opts out of the Mindac mm -hmm. Upstream Coalition and says, hey, I'm going to go with a ring levy dike. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think each community has to make those decisions for themselves. Uh, we with the Red River Basin Commission have from the very beginning have said we need to engage people upstream and downstream to make sure they're comfortable with what we're planning, what we're trying to do. Because we can't do just what's best for Moorhead and Fargo. We have to do what's best for the basin. And that's what we've been working to try and do, find those solutions. But I guess that's my that's my whole point. You said the Oxbow's got to do what's best for them. If, if that's the case and every city takes that approach, there's never going to be a basin-wide approach to this scenario. And again, we've got some of the best farmland on the planet Someone's got to be smart enough to say, hey, here's a basin-wide approach that's going to be successful. We don't need to use the version to wipe out Hickson, Christine, mm -hmm. those different areas. Well, we, we do need a basin-wide approach. and uh, But it uh, includes a diversion, you're saying? Well, a diversion, I think, is an important element. In order for us to provide the kind of protection we need in the Moorhead, Fargo metropolitan area, uh, we need more than the dikes and levees that we have in place now or that we're looking at putting in place. That uh, if that big flood ever comes along, which eventually it will, uh, we're not going to be protected. And we run the risk of flooding out our metro area like Grand Forks. And look at the devastation that Grand Forks suffered as a result of that. Now, in trying to come up with this, we need to make sure that we do our very best to mitigate any upstream or downstream impacts that this diversion may have. And that's where the basin-wide approach comes in. And we've been very careful to engage people upstream and downstream to make sure that they uh, get on board with uh, the solution that they provide their input. Two more quick questions for you. One is, can Fargo begin to build high rather than wide, maybe to help mitigate some of this problem? Because I know a lot of this is about development. People are saying, hey, Fargo bought off Oxbow. Can we start to build maybe semi-high rises in Fargo, or is it because the soil is too slippery that we can't do that? I think you have a limit on the height of dikes because of the soil composition here in the in the metro area and in the basin. Uh, but Fargo and Moorhead both have been raising dikes. They've got plans to add to their dikes. Uh, but I think we're probably going to be about at the maximum. And when that big flood comes along, uh, hopefully a long time from now, uh, those dikes, as they're envisioned, are not going to be adequate to provide the protection we need in the metro area. Projections already have this thing about $2 billion. We know there's going to be a lot of lawsuits. In your opinion, does the, does the version ever get done in your lifetime? I think there's a good chance. Uh, it's what not would you a, give it, 50-50, uh, I think 20? it's more than 50-50, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not a foregone conclusion. 
It might not happen. A lot of it is going to depend on whether federal monies are there. Uh, North Dakota obviously has made a major commitment, as has the city of Fargo. I think they're prepared to do whatever it takes, but they can't do it alone. There's going to have to be substantial federal money involved, and that's probably the biggest question here, to what extent would there be federal money available. Maury, thanks for talking about the diversion. Coming up Wednesday night, we're going to have the mayor of Oxbow, Jim Nyhop, with us. Stay with us. Representative Lanning is going to stick around. We're going to talk about Governor Dayton's budget proposal in Minnesota, as well as what's going to go on with the Viking Stadium. The money is not coming in like they anticipated. Is it going to fall now on more taxpayers' laps? And let us know your thoughts on the diversion and the, obviously the budget in Minnesota. Go to our website, 630pov.com. Love to hear your point of view. Stay close as we go to this unbelievably profitable break. Welcome back with me tonight, Representative Maury Lanning. Again, Maury, thanks for sticking around. I want to touch on Governor Dayton's budget proposal for last week and also the Viking Stadium. As you saw, obviously, Governor Dayton said, hey, we're going to raise taxi on the wealthier Minnesotans. Mm -hmm. I talked to Representative Paul Marquardt last week and said, hey, get ready. There's going to be an exodus out of Minnesota. Do you agree with that or not? I, I agree. And I've been very concerned about that, especially on top of what the federal government has done <clears throat> with uh, President Obama's initiative with what's been put in place now for taxing the higher income uh, folks. I have a real concern about people exodusing Minnesota. And maybe we don't have a lot of super rich here uh, up on this part of the state, but we certainly have some people who are going to be adversely affected by that, and we can't afford to lose any more. We've been losing too many high-income people over the years because of the tax differential with North Dakota. And, of course, you look at states like uh, Florida and Arizona that don't have any income tax you're going to be finding more and more people that are going to establish residency there. Uh, people who have money, they have the, the flexibility. They have the options of being able to, to move around. And I'm also very concerned with the governor's sales tax proposals and the impact that that will have on those of us on the border. Uh, the only advantage we've had on, on sales tax has been the fact that we don't tax clothing. And if we were to start taxing clothing, I'm afraid that would have some real uh, negative impact on us uh, in our border communities. I want to talk a little bit more about Moorhead specifically. Look at North Dakota right mm -hmm. now. We've got a bill in that would might suspend income taxes for two years in North Dakota. Again, another reason to move west if you're in Minnesota. How much does it begin to, I don't want to use the word decimate, but maybe I should, decimate Moorhead? We have been able, uh, years ago, it goes back to the early 80s, we've been able to help level the playing field on taxes for businesses. Uh, through disparity reduction credit and border city credits. Uh, we've been able to lower the cost of doing business in Moorhead, but there still is a differential. And I think it's uh, any, anything you do to make the business and tax climate in, in North Dakota better than Minnesota is of great uh, concern to us. And North Dakota is going in the opposite direction. They're not raising taxes, they're lowering taxes. And uh, we have a real concern of the impact uh, that that will have on us especially along the border. The one kudos you do have to give Governor Dayton, he is looking to lower corporate uh, taxes by 14%. Yes. I think that is a good move in the right direction. Yes, we've been let's, advocating that for years. Let's move to the Viking Stadium because obviously this was your baby last yep. year as you were going through this. I want to read you some stats and you tell me where you see sure. these things going. They anticipated uh, roughly $348 million from the pull tabs gambling. Yes. They looked at 2,500 sites that were going to be in places across Minnesota. Right now there's 120 not even close to that number, yep. and they're at net receipts of $635,000. Is there a phase two, or what are we missing here? We knew it was going to be slow. Uh, we're not at all surprised by the fact that the revenue has not been coming in uh, rapidly at this point in time. We expected that because you're dealing with charities, you're dealing with organizations out there that oftentimes have volunteers trying to put together their plan for how they're going to raise uh, charitable gaming money. It's going to take time. Uh, we knew that. The $348 million is what we would uh, pay for over time, over a 30-year period of time. You probably would need 25 to $30 million a year uh, to cover the bond indebtedness of that uh, investment. Uh, we're still uh, hopeful and optimistic that that money will be there as we go forward. We don't need the money right now. We're not spending money right now. Construction hasn't started. They're still trying to get the building planned and move in that direction. And so 
Uh, there's no reason to panic at this point in time. Any chance you forfeit right now? It's $800 for a bar to put in all the electronic mm -hmm. stuff up front. Any chance you guys forfeit that? Is hey, we need more penetration to get this money coming in? I think they need to look at all the people involved with this at uh, what can we do to provide incentives for organizations to set up uh, the electronic pull tabs and electronic bingo. We think bingo, by the way, is going to generate more revenue even probably than the pull tabs. And so uh, there, need to be more, there needs to be more marketing, there needs to be more support for organizations trying to do this. And again, I say there's no reason to panic. Is there a reason for concern? Of course there is. We want money to come in uh, more than it has so far, but uh, there's no reason to panic. Last question for you, if you can be kind of brief on this one. Minnesota Gopher baseball team upset because the Viking mm -hmm. stadium is not going to change its configuration to help them for spring games. Should the Vikings be worried about Gopher baseball? Well, that's a little hard for them. They're putting up four hundred and <laughs> yeah, uh, four hundred and seventy-seven million dollars, and uh, they're not interested, I'm sure, in trying to do that, spend that kind of money for go for baseball or other baseball. But I know the college and high school baseball folks would love to be able to. Uh, play games in, in well, a new stadium as they have in the Metro. I mean, I'd be love to play in this Sunday, too. But yeah. hey, you know, more th great, great to have you. I really appreciate yeah, your time. You we'll do this Thank more you. often. Stay close. We're going to get to your feedback, plus a quick weather update. Please go to our website, 630pov.com. Call us, text us, email, whatever's easiest. We'll be right back. If you could get the best services at a great price, why wouldn't you?